Joining us now from Phoenix, President of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy, Dr. Zudi Shasser. He's the author of the book, Battle for the Soul of Islam. Also with us from Washington, senior contributor for the Daily Caller and columnist at the week, Matt Lewis. And we want to pick up on our conversation earlier about President Obama's remarks at the prayer breakfast. He reflected on some of the dark moments from the history of Christianity when discussing religious extremism. Doctor, let's begin with you. Some found it insulting. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people obviously trying to figure out the moral equivalency between Christianity 800 years ago and Islamic extremism today. What, what were your thoughts on what the president said yesterday at the prayer breakfast? Well, I have to tell you, Joe, as somebody who's dedicated my life to Islamic reform and countering the cancer that's within the ideologies that create groups like ISIS, ISIS is a symptom. And for the president to do a moral equivalency of Christianity from a thousand years ago to what's happening today without mentioning the word Islam, really, without mentioning the Islamic Republic of Iran or the OIC or Saudi Arabia, but basically saying ISIS is the comparison, it's absurd. And I think had he given the vision of what's happening that Islam needs to go through reform, needs to separate mosque and state, needs to go through an anti-theocracy movement, that's fine. But to say that comparison of this vicious savagery that's happening under ISIS with the entire Christian community and what was done at the time of the Crusades I think is absurd. And not to mention, what is the relevance today? How do you the president how does the president lead and this is what really upsets me is that he's not engaging reformers he met with muslims in the white house of, uh, yesterday he's not engaging feminists and gay rights activists and liberals and others who want to bring reform and counter theocracy against the Saudi Republic and against the Iranian Islamic Republic. He mentioned Pastor Abdini in Iran but didn't call it the Islamic Republic. So, yeah. you know, it's just sort of too much coddling and not enough frank frank language from the president. Mm -hmm. Matt Lewis, obviously the president played into um, a lot of conservatives' worst fears, a lot of conservative evangelicals' worst fears yesterday. It did seem like a stretch so preposterous that it has all of us around the table scratching our heads. Ads. That's right, Joe. Look, I think some of this is context, frankly. You know, just a couple days ago, you had this Jordanian pilot being burned alive. That's the context in which we live. And now we have this sort of intellectual moral equivalency <laughs> argument being made. Um, it's not the kind of thing that you would expect to hear from a, a leader who believes that we're facing a serious threat. You know, you can't imagine Ronald Reagan going up against the atheistic Soviets. Uh, saying, but let me make be clear, America is also not perfect. You well, know, you know, I was thinking about this last night. This would be the equivalent of FDR when giving a speech against Nazi Germany, going, "Now, of course, what we did right. to the Indians, really yeah. bad. Native Americans, I mean, that's really bad. So we really, I mean, have no room to talk about what Hitler's doing." I don't think that's. No, listen, they saying. burned alive a pilot burn him alive. They are beheading children. They are burying people alive. They are the face of evil. I don't understand the need for moral equivalence with Christians. There is no moral equivalence uh, uh, with, with, with with the extremes that we're seeing here with ISIS. And, why and does Joe, the president just have... Yeah, doctor, why can't the president just come out and say, yeah, they're the face of evil. They're bad without trying to, to uh, create some half-baked moral equivalency. And I have to tell you, I mean, there were 25 of us that had an ad in the, in the New York Times on January 11th in which we said we want to beautify our religion. We want to counter the ideologies of, of political Islam that's creating this monster. And we need leadership from the White House that's willing to engage us. If he doesn't engage the problem as being within the House of Islam, he's going to allow the radicals to set the narrative. And that's really what he's doing. And I can tell you that in today's uh, uh, trying time, there's an opportunity in the Arab awakening. And unless we can engage and say that Islam is in that time of change, we're not going to get any anywhere in this conflict and continue to fight jihad. The book is The Battle for the Soul of Islam. Uh, Dr. Jasser, thank you so much. Matt Lewis, thank you as well. Thank you, Matt.